Hello and welcome to this lesson which is part of the Let's Count resources to support Census 21. In this lesson we're going to look at how the census can be used to help to keep our communities healthy and how the National Health Service might use census data to make sure that it is providing the right support for people in particular areas of England and Wales. We're also going to think about how the census data has helped the National Health Service to adapt during the Covid pandemic. This lesson is going to use data from the 2011 census, the last census, and we're going to use the data to make decisions about how we think we can improve the health and well-being of the population in the areas that we have selected, but maybe also in your own local area. You can get hold of data about your own area by using the NOMIS website, and there is a guide available to support this. On slides 30 onwards of this presentation, you'll find copies of the charts used in the lesson, which you or your teachers may want to print out so that you can work with them while we go through the lesson. The lesson is going to focus on statistics and data handling. We're going to look at a range of different charts and graphs, and we're going to be using those to ask questions and to solve problems, interpreting data presented in different ways. Before we get into the data, let's just have a think about the National Health Service. It was founded in 1948, after the Second World War, when there was a strong sense that we should look after people who needed help, especially soldiers who had fought for their country. Before the National Health Service, people had to pay every time a doctor or a nurse treated them. So the aim of the National Health Service was that services were provided free and that everyone rich or poor, man, woman or child, could use it or any part of it. I'm sure that we've all benefited from the NHS and have been very grateful that we can get medical help without charge when we need it. The NHS is made up of hospitals, healthcare centres, doctors' surgeries and all the people who look after you if you are unwell or unhappy. It is important to have these facilities where they are most needed. If we are happy and healthy, we are likely to be pleased with the way our life is going. And if we are healthier, we are likely to be happier. Often, happiness leads to good health and good health leads to happiness. To help plan for the National Health Service to look after our mental and physical health, the government relies on information from the census. The census information is used by local areas to plan the developments that they need to keep their changing populations healthy and also happy. Have a think about your own area. Do you think it has what is needed to keep everyone happy as well as healthy? If you had some money to spend, what new facility would you like to see where you live? I've given you some suggestions on the slide. An indoor sports centre perhaps with a gym, swimming pool, courts for basketball and badminton? Or maybe you think a new outdoor sports facility is needed with pitches for rugby, football and so on. What about number three, a new bowling green? I wonder if you've walked past a large flat area, green area in your town or village and seen people playing lawn bowls. Have you ever had a go yourself? Do you think you might, your area might need one? There are other possibilities too. A new theatre or cinema, or perhaps new schools and healthcare are what you think your area needs. What about housing? Is there enough safe housing for older people where they can be looked after and kept safe? Have a talk to someone and remember that you need to justify your ideas. So you need to be saying, I think we need a new indoor sports centre because. You might want to pause the recording here while you talk about this. You've had a chance to decide what you think your, new, your local area needs, and I wonder if you agreed with the person you talked to. But what does your class think as a whole? How could you find this out? Have a think about how you could find out what your whole class thinks about what needs to be developed in your local area. If you're learning from home, perhaps you could ask the class online. So did you have a class vote, um, either in school if that's where you are, or online if you're learning from home? Maybe you collected your class votes into a spreadsheet and created a graph. This is one we've created for you. I wonder if your vote was similar. Whatever you did, 
Are you, as a class, happy with the result? I hope you are. Let's think beyond your classroom, though. Do you think everybody in your local area would be happy with the result? Do you think that your vote really represents what your area needs? Have a talk about this and discuss whether your class vote really represents the views of all the people who live in your local area. Would everybody where you live be happy with this result? Pause the recording while you talk. I wonder what you decided. I expect there was quite a lot of discussion with some of you thinking, yes, this is the right decision for our area and others thinking that it might not be the right result for everybody. Let's think about how we could find out if this really is the right decision for the local population as a whole. How would you find out? How might you go about finding out that perhaps a hospital is needed more than a new sports centre? What would you need to know to make that decision? And how do you think you might be able to find that out? So pause again and consider those questions. I'm sure you came up with lots of ideas. Perhaps creating a survey that you could take home and ask friends and family to get a wider view of what people think they need. The census has done this for us. It is a count of all the people in England and Wales. It asks lots of questions of each household. It asks them where they live, how old they are, what jobs they have. Lots of questions, but it also asks them how healthy they feel they are. The census asks all these questions and the Office for National Statistics, who organise and run the census, collects all the answers and gives the information to both national and local governments so that they can make decisions about how to develop the country to meet the needs of the population. It allows them to make sure that we have the facilities that we need in the places that we need them. This is why it is so important for adults to complete the census in March 2021 when the next census happens. For the rest of this lesson, we're going to use data from the last census in 2011 to see if the decisions that you made as a class are the right ones according to the census information. Here is some information from the 2011 census from a real place that we're going to call A-Town. It is a pie chart, which I hope you'll have seen before, and it shows us age groups of the people who live here. The bigger the piece of the pie chart, the more the number of people in that age group. Working round clockwise from the top, sort of 12 o'clock, we have the 0 to 9 year olds, the darker blue section, then the 10 to 17 year olds in the orange, 18 to 29 year olds in the grey section, 30 to 64 year olds, who are the large yellow section, and then the light blue of the 65 and over. It says 90, but it includes all those aged 65 and over. You came to a decision in your class about what you felt was needed in your local area. Do you think that decision you made would be the right one for a town, based on what you can see here, about the ages of the people who live there? Discuss whether you think your class decision would be right if you lived in a town. You might want to pause the recording here. Here is some information about another place that we're going to call Sea Town. Sea Town has a slightly different age profile than A Town. So would that change your decision about what is perhaps needed in Sea Town to keep the population happy and healthy? Discuss what you think the right decision would be for Sea Town based on the information that you have about the ages of the people who live there. Again, you might want to pause the recording here while you talk. What about where you live? Use the NOMIS website to find the data about the ages of people who live in your area and decide whether your decision is still the right one now you know about the ages of the population in your area. Another question that the census asks is what people think about their own health. It asks people if they think they are in very good health, good health, fair health, bad health or very bad health. This pie chart gives us this information for the people who live in a town. So why are we bothering about information regarding health? If we're happy and healthy, we're likely to be pleased with the way our life is going. And in this lesson, we want to think about how we can improve our lives through the things that we have around us in our local areas. Have a look at this health information for the people in A-Town 
and see if this information supports the decision that you have made. Or perhaps it might add information to suggest that another way of developing the area might be needed. You might want to pause the recording here again while you discuss this. Here is the health information from the census for the people who live in Seatown. What does this tell us about Seatown? If you put this together with the information on their ages, have you still come to the right decision about what you think the people of Seatown need to develop in their area? Remember that health and happiness are often closely linked. So of those eight things that we considered developing, what is going to be the most important to improve the quality of life, do you think, for the people who live in Seatown? You might want to pause the recording again here while you talk about that. What does the census tell you about the health of the people who live in your area? You might want to use the NOMIS website again here to find the data for where you live and discuss whether it means you need to rethink your decision. You've had lots of chances now to discuss the data that's been presented to you about the ages and the health of people in two areas of the country, and perhaps to discuss the same data for the population in your area. Now we really need to go for it and make some decisions. You're going to look at the age and health data for each of the places that you've considered, and I'm going to ask you to decide on two things from that list that you think will be most important to improve the lives of this population and to keep people happy and healthy. Let's think about how the census information helps the National Health Service. The NHS has been very much in our minds recently as they've worked to tackle the difficulties caused by the pandemic. Many of you, I'm sure, will have created and displayed rainbows to show support for all those who work for the NHS. Hospitals have had to make changes in the way that they provide care for local communities, and they've had to make those changes based on what they know about the people who live around their hospital. We're going to think about the areas that we have been looking at in terms of the age and the health of the population, and think about how we would support the NHS and these local hospitals to make the changes that they need in order to provide that care that these communities need. So what decisions have had to be made so that hospitals have been prepared to deal with an increased number of patients during the COVID pandemic? Look at the data for A-Town, C-Town and your own area if you've been able to get that data and decide how you think you need to change the hospitals in those areas in order to keep the population safe and healthy. Treatments for patients with coronavirus are improving, but hospitals need to be prepared to do this work. You're going to have a look at the data for these different areas and you're going to decide what the hospitals in those areas need to do in order that they are ready to treat their local populations. Now you can't do all three things, so you need to use the data to decide on what the most important change is that you need to make. You need to decide on the priority, the most important thing that needs to be done. Look at the data and complete the sentence, we will, with the option that you think is the priority for that area. How would you advise the hospital to make sure that they were ready to deal with more coronavirus patients if it was needed? I'm sure lots of you will have heard of Florence Nightingale, but you might be wondering what she's doing in this maths lesson. She, of course, was a nurse and she, along with Mary Jane Seacole, became famous for the work that they did caring for wounded soldiers in the Crimean War in the mid 1800s. What you may not know is that Florence Nightingale was a very keen mathematician. She persuaded her father to let her study maths when he wanted her to study things that girls at that time were expected to study. But she persuaded him and continued her math studies with great success. She was able to use data and statistics in order to save the lives of many soldiers. So how did she do it? This image might look a bit familiar. Does it remind you of something? Have a look at it and think about what it might be showing and what questions you would like to ask about the chart. Pause the recording and think about what it's telling you. What this is, is a chart that Florence Nightingale herself developed and she called it the coxcomb chart because it looks a bit like the bit you get on the top of a chicken's head and that's called a coxcomb. It's a sort of pie chart. 
Looking at the key, you can see what the different coloured areas represent. The orange parts are the soldiers who sadly died due to their injuries and wounds. The darker brown area is deaths from other causes. And the important bit for Florence Nightingale was the grey areas. These were the deaths from diseases. And the important thing was that these were diseases that didn't need to kill the soldiers. She persuaded the authorities that if they kept their hospitals cleaner, they could reduce the number of deaths from disease. And that's exactly what happened. She worked to make hospitals cleaner and more hygienic. And she and nurses like her, including nurses like Mary Seacole, saved countless lives as a result. Her pioneering work with data and statistics meant that Florence Nightingale was the first female fellow of the Royal Statistical Society, elected in 1858, just two years after her return from the Crimean War. We've already said that the Coxcomb chart looks rather like the pie charts that we've been using today. And some people do believe that Florence Nightingale invented the pie chart. I've done a bit of research to check and the first pie chart appears in a book by William Playfair in Scotland in 1801. Not many people would have seen the book and Florence Nightingale may well not have seen it before she came up with the idea for her Coxcomb chart. But even if she did, she used William Playfair's idea of a pie chart to great effect. And it was her Coxcomb charts which brought this way of displaying data to public attention through her work. So she may not have invented the pie chart, pie chart but she was very important in developing this sort of data and using it to make a difference to healthcare and people's lives back in the 19th century. You might want to have a calculator to hand for these next activities. You could do the calculations with paper and pencil, but the calculator will speed things up for you. You will need to estimate first though. So far, we have talked about these towns and the age of their populations, but we haven't talked about how many people actually live there. Here is the pie chart for the ages of people in a town. And this time I've given you one piece of information and that is the number of over 65s who live there. I wonder if from that figure, you can estimate the number of people who live in A-Town. What do you know about the pie chart? What other way of describing this information could help you? We've already said that a calculator might be useful, but is there any other mathematical equipment that could help you? So given the information on the slide, I'd like you to estimate the population of A-Town. You might want to pause the recording here while you have a go at estimating and working it out. You've had a look at the population of A-Town. Now it's the turn of C-Town. I wonder what you learned from your discussion for the last slide and how can you use that to help you this time? For C-Town, I've given you the number of 30 to 64 year olds. Before we go any further, do you think the population of C-Town is going to be larger or smaller than the population of A-Town? You might want to look back at the figure you had for that one section in A-Town to compare. I think the figures you were given are quite similar. So what do you think? Is A-Town bigger than C-Town or is C-Town bigger than A-Town? On the next slide, on slide 27, you can see the two pie charts side by side. So you might want to have a look at that slide and think about this question. Having decided which town you think is bigger, can you now use the information given to estimate the population of C-Town? This time I want you to think about how a protractor might be useful. Protractors measure angles. So how could knowing the size of the angle in this part of the pie chart help you with this estimate? You might want to go back and use the protractor to revise your estimate for A-Town too. So here you can see the information for A-Town and C-Town side by side. So given this information, do you think A-Town is bigger than C-Town? or C-Town is bigger than A-Town. So pause the recording and have a think. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about how the census information is so important in shaping our communities so that the population of Wales and England has what is needed to keep us all safe, healthy and happy. Perhaps you'll look out for the census in March 2021 and see how your information is added to your household. Thank you.